Okay, g'day everyone, it's Warren from NQ Explorers. Today we're up in the uh, gold fields with Ben here from Gold Diggers. Um, Ben's going to show us around here a bit and tell us a bit of the history of the place and give us some good tips on uh, where to find the yellow stuff either with a detector or uh, wet or dry pan. So Ben, uh, where are we at the moment mate? And we're here at the puddler at the moment. Um, so, so this, I, I don't know, there's not that many puddlers in Queensland, are there? No, it's more a Victorian thing. Yeah, true. The, but I believe there's another one over on, um, on the, uh, I think there's a couple around Warwick. Yeah. Um, but I think there's one over at Gumtree Flat as well, but nowhere near the okay. as good a condition as this. So what you were saying to me earlier was this could be like a depression area, era, like 1930s puddle, we're not yeah. really sure. Not really sure when this was, there's not a lot of history on the puddler, yeah. but it's a, it's a fantastic landmark to be in this condition, oh, yeah. with, right. we're in a fossicking area where it's open slather sort of thing. That's right, so this is a public uh, prospecting area. In Queensland you do need a fossicking licence, uh, which you can buy for a period of months or a year um, to come into these areas. But other than that, that's the only permission you need. Um, and as Ben said, it's great to see a bit of history like this undisturbed. Um, so what's the principle of this, Ben? Like, obviously, they'll work. these old-timers here or whoever was working this ground were in some pretty clay stuff, so they had to break it up in the puddler. That, that's right. When you look around this area, there's, there's, there's scrapings and diggings everywhere. So... Normally, just looking at this and refreshing my memory, that green area over there seems to be always green. Yeah. So I wonder whether that isn't spring fed. We'll have a look at that. Yeah. So we're either thinking that maybe the blokes are working this this little spring, uh, like swampy bit in the back there. Yeah. They could have been working it, or they could have dug that out. Yep. And then realising there's a bit of gold, and it started to use it as a as a as a dam sort of thing. Okay. So you can see the puddle here. It's obviously a circular uh, construction. You would have had a pole in the middle. I'll, I'll jump over there, yeah, Warren. Yeah. There's the, there's the remnants. I don't know whether you can see it too well there, but there's the remnant, remnants of the stump. Um, and that would have probably been dug in and a, 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 a tree put in there. Yeah. Now that would have been a couple of feet tall. Um, and it would have had a big beam running across it. Um, one end on the outside circle would have had a horse running around the outside circle. On the other end, they would have a rake or a rock or a old stump or something or other running around the bottom of the puddler. Now, what they'd do is they'd fill it up with water um, and then they'd start loading clay wash into it um, that they'd dug from the surrounding areas. And the stump or the rake going around the outside would break that clay up, put the clay into, subs uh, into suspension. Yep. Um, the gold would then fall out and um, be sitting on the bottom, and then they'd they'd let the slurry down into the creek. Um, so we think that it'd probably run down there, um, and then they'd just keep filling it um, yeah. with water and wash, and um, so the so then it when they when they'd finish working their period of a, a day a week, they would then dig the bottom of this out take it down to the creek with a rocker box if there's not a lot of running water. They might have used a sluice if we had a bit of running water. Yeah. Um, cleaned the concentrate up and then and then panned it off to right. panned it off to uh, get the gold out. So, so to put this amount of work into a bit of ground, there's obviously been good gold come out of here. There's good gold come out of here over mm. the years. Um, I mean, you can still get in and, and crevice and, and pan yeah, some good fine that, gold. Down in that creek there, it's fairly heavily creviced. Yeah, um, yeah. And... Um, we, which is fan it's, it's fantastic that there's that much work still going on in this area yeah. and this thing's left alone. Yeah, I, I, I love it too because even the, you can see all the vertical timbers on the walls of the puddle are still there. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but uh, it is yeah. well preserved. Around here, there's a few, a few more of the vertical, puddle, uh, vertical timbers. Yeah. Through here. Yep. And there's even a bit of the, bit of the old timber. Yeah. It's still kicking around loose on top of the ground. Here. Yeah. So, so um, that's that's uh, the date of this. We don't really know, but so this goldfield dates from what the 1860s. 1860s. Um, I, I would suspect this area was, you know, a grazing area between sort of 1840 and to 18 what well, on. Yeah. Um, so I would I would suspect there was gold being found earlier than 1860s. Yep. Um, but uh, certainly from 1860s, there was work happening here. The rushes. The big rushes in Warwick were 1865-ish. Yeah. Um, so this predates Gympie, doesn't it? Predates Gympie. Yeah. In fact, the 
there, there was at the start, at the peak of the rush, there was about 5,000 blokes between here, um, Danes Creek, all the way up to um, Talgai. Yeah. And there was, so 5,000 blokes. Gimpy gets discovered. There's no one here. <laughs> Typical, they've all, yeah. They've all gone up Typical there. 19th century, yeah. yeah all, they all gone to the next rush. Yeah. We'll go down and look in the creek now and Ben can show us some of the spots likely to find gold in a creek. Um, whether you're out here panning with your family, having a bit of fun, or even with your detector, um, there are certain spots where you can uh, maximise your chances of finding gold. Absolutely. We'll go and have a look. Righto, so now we're down in the creek. Uh, we're going to have a look at some of the spots where you might expect to find, find gold concentrating or even small nuggets if you're really lucky. So what do we got here, Ben? So this is just a rock bar running straight across the creek. So the water's coming down the creek this way. Um, it's whipping around this edge here. Um, normally on the outside bends, this is really an outside bend, you won't find much gold. The water's running too quick, it doesn't settle. Um, so you're looking for areas of back pressure where the, where the water's sort of, um, there's not as much pressure, there's not as much flow. Um, and this rock bar is a good example because you can see the, riff, uh, the, the rocks running parallel across the creek, but you look how deep that is. That's so a beauty of that one. Isn't that's it? a beautiful thing. Now, mm. people have been crevicing in there. There's, oh, there's probably not much wash in there, um, but that little bit there would be probably worth panning. It'd probably be the best bit in the whole body creek. But also, as it comes across the top here, down the bottom here, It'd be, it'd be worthwhile doing in there. But any of these, this rock's all broken up through here, any of these crevices through here uh, would be just phenomenal. So mate, this gets topped up every year anyway, but like yep. every flood's gonna bring more gold down all the time. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Particularly just the, near your legs there, I don't know whether we can see it, as it comes around that corner, there'll be a bit that'll sit down in the, in the right, right in the bottom here as it comes around the corner. That bit there is probably worthwhile mm. Mm. having a crack at. So you don't even need a lot of water running. No. To, uh, Actually, that's quite moist now. We had a little bit of rain during the yeah. week and there's, it hasn't flowed, but uh, uh, another big storm as we get towards summer. Yeah. This creek, I mean, this could be, this would be roaring in a photo. Oh, right? absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And when we talk about outside edges, right, it, when, there's, when there's creeks in flood, the water's probably up over that ledge you see yeah, there. So. Yeah. It, the, the outside edge could be a bit higher up there, yeah. so yeah. So, so that's... I mean, so you're coming down here with your pan, and uh, you'd be and even a, a detector with a small coil, a, a, like a, a high-end VLF. Yep, is going to ping small nuggets in here. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Those little tiny sniper coils yeah. are just beautiful for this sort of because you can get right down close yep, in yep. there. Um, as soon as you put a big coil on it, you, you got to be too far off the ground. Yeah. To, to really get anything. You so need you to be able to manoeuvre up along these cracks and crevices. Yep, yep. And um, I mean, I, when I was over the US a couple of years ago, uh, we were working on a bench on the side of a river and uh, someone had cleaned out a crack, but uh, one of the blokes was with Dave, he, he, he got an ounce nugget out of the bottom of the crack, yeah. so they didn't go to the bottom of the crack. Yeah, quite often you, you hear that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, so I might even... Uh, after, after we finish filming this, I might even duck up the car and put a sniper call and have a look in there. <laughs> we'll have a look. Yeah, looks like a good spot. So there we go, like uh, Ben's talking about low pressure zones where the water uh, drops the heavies, like the magnetites, the uh, iron stones, and of course the gold inside Ben's, downstream of these big obstacles. And like Ben just said, rock bars that are across the fly of the creek is a perfect natural riffle to trap gold. So that's where you're going to start looking. What, um, what a lot of people don't understand is that gold, an ounce of gold, takes 317 metres per second of water over it to move it. Right. Right? And that's on a flat surface. So, as soon as gold can drop out, it's that heavy. As soon as it can drop out, it'll drop out. Yeah. Right? Like a lot of the old, old timers would call it lazy, because it had just, as soon as it got anywhere where it could, it'd just drop just stay and just there. stay there. Um, so these nuggets could have been in here for a couple of million years, really. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. The reefs around here have been decomposing. Like some of the some of the nuggets that have, have been found out here, they 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 they're almost like they've fallen out of the reef on one side, and then the other side's polished clean. Okay. And there's no sharp edges or anything on it. 
So it could be that the gold that's been that's been moved around out here is all during ice age. Yeah. So we're talking a long time ago. Yeah, so yeah. For it, Australia, it, it, we are. We haven't had an ice age for a while. No. No. Yeah. No. Well, well that's that's that's. I mean, that's where you start in the creek. Obviously, if you're going to come prospecting with your family or just by yourself, uh, you need to go where, where gold's been found. You need to go to a gold field. Um, and they're well documented in Australia because we've been digging gold up here for 160 years now or longer. So come to a gold field and then look for places like Ben just pointed out in the gold field where you maximise your chance of finding uh, flower gold, little pickers in your pan or even nuggets with your detector. Right, we're just exploring down the creek. We've come across a really interesting feature here. Um, looks like it's been here a long time too. What do you reckon this is, Ben? It's, it's been here a fair while. The creek, again, the creek's flowing this way, um, and I would say these these have been put in here as a artificial riffle um, to collect the gold underneath these logs here. Um, and you can see either side, these are raised here, raised yeah, up there. Like a dish shape. Like a dish shape, yeah. so that all the concentrate comes in here. So whoever's put this here, and it looks old. Um, and you, well, I've obviously been digging it out, but it's obviously you got a bit of a boil hole there where it's coming over. Absolutely, and the gold would be, the gold would be collecting, you know, won't be but won't be below here. Although in a big flood it would be. Yeah. But mostly it'd be collecting in this two yeah. feet area. So you don't have to dig out a lot of ground for the concentrate to come in. There's another one a bit up a bit up, up a bit further there. It's a bit more modern. It's concrete. Someone's put a bit of concrete in there and a few rocks. Yeah. But that, again, that's probably pretty old as well. So this is blokes minimising the amount of work they need to concentrate the material. Absolutely. And like you said, you can go home for two weeks and come back and this will have topped itself up. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. And and all of a sudden you've got, you know, every time it, every time it rains in Warwick, you can come and pick up a 20-litre yeah. bucket or a 40-litre <laughs> bucket, yeah. 40 litres of bloody gravel to yeah. take home and wash. It always amazes me, the ingenuity of the old timers. I mean, they... I mean, a lot of those blokes weren't well educated, but boy, they knew how to find gold. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think, particularly during the Depression, they were driven a bit yeah. by hunger. Yeah. You know. They... And you were saying earlier that um, the Queensland government actually issued blokes with gear to go looking for... in the Depression. In the Depression, yeah. Because there was a lot of blokes in town that with not a lot to do. Yeah. Um, and they're hanging around and, you know, the old factory jobs, there might have been 100 blokes sitting out the front of a factory looking for, you yeah. know, one job. Yeah. So they issued... I believe, I'd have to look this up again, but I believe they issued like a wheelbarrow, shovel and pans yeah. and, and sent, sent the guys off sort of thing. So that's right, free government wheelbarrow. Yeah, I think they even give you a week's worth of rations. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> but um, a lot of blokes end up out here and, yeah. you know, even some of the closer gold fields into, into Brisbane, there's a couple of little areas that, you know, going up Penogra Forest, that yep. sort of area, a lot of blokes ended up up in there. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, that's the thing about uh, East Coast Australia, you can just about pan fine gold from Cape oh. York to Melbourne almost, like on the ranges, yeah. like east flowing streams and, and the yeah. west flowing streams, but for, uh, not necessarily gold nuggets or, or it was never a gold field, but you can get colours in a lot of these creeks. Oh, absolutely. Like, it's if you spend enough time, I think you'd get colour in every creek yeah. up the east coast. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Let's keep, we'll keep exploring down the creek yeah, here. Yeah, we'll we can go find. down there. Here's a spot that shows this inside bend pretty well. Yeah, okay. Um, so the water's coming down the creek. There's a bit of a bend through here. So the water will be hitting this, this rock wall here. So what it's done is this is fairly free of gravel. There's hardly any gravel along here, but it's depositing the gravel into here. Um, so this is the inside bend that you'd be looking for. And all this gravel here would be worthwhile at panning or detecting over. Um, so, and in it, it's, it's, it's full of ironstone and quartz and little pieces of everything. You know, it's that you want to see. Broken. And the quartz is really mineralised sort of quartz. Yeah, it's Obviously not real clear. Quartz. Like, it's, it's, it's quite dark. And, and what I also like to see with, with quartz, and we might put a shot of this up a bit closer, is this fractured quartz. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. Yep. Like, the, the, the quartz is broken up means that the reef's breaking up. So you start to see some nuggets. Yeah. Um, so when it's breaking up like that and got cracks all through it, that tends to lead me to it thinking nuggets out of the out of the reef yeah. wherever this has come from. Yeah. So, so that's, I mean, 
this is pretty flat country around here, though, too, and like there's no. Uh, these reefs are long gone, obviously. Yeah, long gone. Mm. You can still spot quartz reefs running through the place. Okay. Um, but it, it, like these these reefs might have decomposed thousands and thousands of years yeah, ago. Yeah. Um, so we're just getting the broken. And like you were saying about the gold sitting in one spot for so long, like a big piece of gold eventually be pulverised because it's so soft into Absolutely, flower yeah. gold and then you get the fines all coming down the creek. Yeah. Um, so it's just an endless process of decomposition. Absolutely. Like like a lot of, some of the nuggets, the really washed nuggets, could have started out the size of that yeah, rock. Exactly, yeah. Right? <laughs> and now they're the size of your thumbnail. I need a know? time machine. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. and, but that... Uh, a nugget, a huge nugget decomposing is where we get all this flower yeah, gold course, from. Yeah, so yeah. it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. Yeah. So, so that, oh, this is a good spot you've found here. This is obviously uh, a low pressure zone where all the gravels and the and the sands and the black sands have, have been dropped on the inside of this creek. Yep. As it surges down this gully, sort yep. of sloshing in the gully against the rock walls there. Yeah. And it's, it's fairly snaky down through here. It's dropping pretty quick, so there'd be a good flow on yeah. it. Yeah. Well, and because you've got this rock wall here. Right, and that rock wall goes right up high. Um, you know, the ground's the ground's not very deep here. What we call deep, and that, uh, that's sort of talking about how much soil is sitting over the top the, of the, the rock. The bottom, right? Yeah. So that's the bottom. Yeah. But I, I don't know whether you can see it on camera here. You can probably see it a bit further down the creek there. But because this is rock on this side, the the inside here is, is shelving, um, and it's fairly flat up to the rock on the far side there. Yep. Um, so in a big flood, this area here probably would get washed clean and your inside corner, which this is an inside corner, would be up higher. So all this area, when I see a rock wall like that, I'm looking the other side. I'm up on that benched area. Uh, uh, that yeah. benched area. Yeah. Because the only reason that's benched is because that's where the floods are running. Yeah, through. right. So, this is a great example of it. Actually, it's a good, good little bit of ground here, actually. Yeah, yeah, yep. Um, so, and then you've got all the old things like the riffles in the in the rock and the, you know, the, the you know, this rock here, and then there's a gap in here to this rock and yeah. all that stuff in there. And even so, the big big trees in the creek, sort of. Yeah, well, there's a lot of like, you can see that big tree line across the creek there. Yeah. In, in behind that, uh, you know, where it touches into the creek. In behind that, there'll be there'll be there'll be gold sitting there. Yeah. Um, and as you go down the creek, there's logs and all sorts of stuff. So there's a lot of areas in this creek that you could uh, prospect in. Yeah. Um, potential. And we're sitting in a four thousand hectare state forest. Yeah. With creeks and gullies like this running in all directions. In all directions. So people people quite often say to me, "Oh, the gr it's flogged out because there's that many blokes going out there." Well. It's not because there's hundreds oh. of these spots like this. I know. Thousands I know. of these spots You're like never this. going to get it all. No. There's always, there's going to be little patches here and there and concentrates. And I mean, a lot of creeks, I mean, creeks should be hot and cold with the gold too, yep. can't they? You can have a real hot spot and then you might have a bit of a barren yep. spot. Just Absolutely. depends on the water flow. Yeah. And don't forget, as soon as you get a big flood, it, it's, it's refilling it's and it's turning again. it all over yeah. again. And, yeah. you know, you can go back to those spots. Yeah. If you if you start marking those spots where you found decent flower gold before, right, and you've panned out some good gold, wait for a big storm to come through and come back yeah. again to the exactly same spot and you'll do it all over again. Exactly. So, I right know. Very important part of the day is uh, boil a billy at lunchtime and have a cup of tea. So that's what we're doing now before we have a bit of a scratch around this hill up behind us. So Ben, uh, earlier in the creek we were talking about, uh, you were talking about mineralisation in the quartz. Now I know um, often you'll see a quartz reef, not necessarily in the gold fields even, and it can be quite barren, it's just pure white quartz. Yep. No mineralisation at all. Yep. Um, so it's not to say that there won't be gold where there's barren quartz reefs, but more likely it's going to be where there's metamorphosized uh, uh, rock where you've got uh, heat and pressure and it's caused the quartz to have this uh, mineralised look through it. It's cracked and it's weathered and this sort of thing. Yep. So if you look at that bit of quartz there, there's, um, it's quite red in places. It's, yeah. it's, it's rusty. Um, a lot of this quartz is quite rusty. This has got a bit of purpley colour through it, and it's quite in the sunlight. It's quite. We'll, we'll move it close to the camera in a minute. It's quite shimmery. Yep. Um, so there's a there's a whole stack of mineralisation like in mica some of this. and stuff in it, here. Absolutely, yeah. 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 And if you look at all this quartz, it's quite heavily fractured. So it's so it's breaking up. 
um, over thousands of years, it's just breaking up. Yeah. Um, so that's what we're talking about, highly mineralised. This sort of red co colour through it. Sometimes the quartz is even um, a much darker colour than this white. Um, in this area, it tends to be fairly white um, so and fairly weathered. Um, the other the other thing, if I don't sc scratch... Uh, hey, the land <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, is this ironstone. There is just ironstone everywhere. And it's magnetic. That's the... That's the way to tell. See how see how rusty that bit of rock is? It's rubbed off on my hand. But um, this ironstone, when I'm seeing that ironstone and this good quartz like this that's highly mineralised, you know you're in the right area yeah. here, as good a chance as any. So Because I know in some spots, even in the gold fields, you get a big quartz blow, but it's pure white, it's barren, there's no old timers digging. Yep. Because yep. the old blokes just didn't. It wasn't worth, they didn't see anything that was worth investigating Absolutely. There. And there's a couple of areas of Jurakai that have got that huge white, white quartz blows. And they are, the ground is just covered with white yeah. quartz. And there's no gold there. Yeah, it's, yeah. You know, when I, first, when I first saw it as a young bloke, I thought, beauty, here we go. <laughs> um, but um, I, I spent a lot of hours in that area yeah. and there's nothing there. So, I, mean, I mean, there are people that go out raw prospecting looking for new, new areas and new reefs. Absolutely. And, and there's no reason to say... There couldn't be gold in those areas, but um, generally where the old timers have been, they found most of the good payable gold fields in Australia. Yeah, the the old timers were the old timers were very very over a period of time they learned to be very very knowledgeable and they 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 could read the ground like I don't yeah. think anyone can read the ground now since no. no like they would just see something and they would away they'd go and you know you end up with mines that are yeah. hundred meters deep and yeah. just just because they spotted something on the surface. Yeah. How does that even work? Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, no. you know. it was a, it's a skill that's long lost, really, because yeah. yeah. it's all handwork. Absolutely. These days we can see into the ground electronically, the detectors, but you still need to be able to go to a known gold field generally uh, to find gold. So, I mean, and looking for mineralization like that in your quartz, in your reefs like that, um, that maximizes your chances of getting nuggets. So, uh, this is just that we actually walk around the back of the car and this was sitting in the ground there. So we thought we'd show you this. This is just the edge of the reef, um, the quartz reef that's um, there, um, and it's the, the base rock that it's in. Um, but you'll see how mineralised it is in places. It's rusting up here. There's a bit of purple. Um, now that's in the rock. This is moss. This is moss and algae and stuff here. But that's in the that purple in the rock, and this is all rust. So, and you can see how it's fracturing, being exposed to the weather. Um, and cracking in different places. Um, a lot of this other stuff we were, we were showing before is all cracking and um, breaking up as well. Um, there's that bit, look how mineralized that yeah, is. It's just yeah. rust. Okay. Uh, right, we've moved on from lunch and uh, another spot here, uh, Ben's brought us to is this quartz blow, it comes down this shallow hillside, but uh, as you can see, this material here is just about all quartz, this little knob we're standing on. So, um, and it's pretty mineralized looking stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's not bad. From the road, there's actually a quartz vein running across the road, and that's how you, um, how, how I noticed coming here. Yeah. Um, but this is all uh, quartz that's decomposing here. It's all sort of loose in the rock there, and um, and that's how it breaks up. And that's how nuggets fall out and work their way down the hill, sort of thing. So, um, but yeah, it's, it, there's that much quartz in here. As Warren was saying, just not no, the undergrowth grows or. Um, anything but it's good looking country as you drop down there it's pretty um not as mineralized up there but if you look down here it's a lot the country's a lot redder down the bottom there yeah. so i mean um like we we're saying earlier even though there's no old timers working just here that doesn't uh shouldn't discourage you from hitting it with the detector absolutely because they not. didn't have metal detectors exactly yeah and uh, unless there was something to lead them into the gold um, there's not saying there's a couple of specimens just laying in here that they never would have bothered with anyway. Absolutely. They and would have had to see it on the surface yeah. or knock, you know, like knock a bit of quartz off, nothing in there, keep yep. on moving. Yeah.